Hi students, welcome to your last video lesson for grade 12 pre-cal, exercise 44, the binomial theorem, and uh, well, I guess continued. Alright, so example 1. Um, find a term that contains x to the power 4, when simplified, of the binomial expansion x squared minus 2 over x to the power 11. Alright, so if we were to expand that completely, there is a term that would contain only x to the power 4. And we have to investigate and find out which one that is. So, we know that the term we're looking for is term k plus 1. Right? So we don't know the value of k. So if it's the fourth term, k would be 3. If it was the sixth term, k would be 5. All right, we know that the term, this term here, will have x to the power of 4 as its variable and exponent. All right, well, we know the formula for the term is this. Notice that nck only deals with the coefficient. And the x4 doesn't have a coefficient yet. We don't know what the coefficient is. So I don't have to include nck. I know that our term is x to the power of 4. nck, again, thrown out. The term x squared, well, that's going to change. That's going to affect the final term because the final term has x4 in it. Well, x squared here to the power of something, that will affect that. Next, the term 1 over x. Notice that it's negative 2 over x, but I only used 1 over x. The reason for that is, again, this negative 2, the coefficient, won't affect the exponent or the variable x. So all I'm dealing with is the things that are going to make the x to the power of 4. Okay, so the exponent of that is n minus k. The exponent of this is k. Well, one there's one value that we do know. Okay, It's the value of n. Because the n is equal to 11. That's the exponent of their binomial. All right, so wh what does our formula look like? Well, we have x to the power of 4 equals to x to the power of 2 to the power of 11 minus k. That's k. And then here I'm going to write x to the power of negative 1. So 1 over x, that's the same thing as x to the power of negative 1. Just makes it a little easier to work with. Sorry, these k's are hard to, to draw. Try that one again. All right. So now, using laws of exponents, I can multiply those two together and then add these two together because they have the same base. And then we're going to have to find an equation to solve for k. So, first thing, I multiply the exponents here. So you have x to the power of 22 minus 2k. And this is times x to the power of negative k. Negative because it's negative 1 to the power of k. So now because they have the same base, I can add these two exponents together. So what I have is x to the power of 4 equals to x to the power of 22 minus 3k, right, because I added these k's together. And now since these two have the same base, I can make the exponents equal to each other. So you have 4 equals to 22 minus 3k, and all I have to do now is solve for k. So I'm going to bring this 22, whoops, wrong button. I'm going to bring this 22 over here. So now you have negative 18 equals to negative 3k, and divide by negative 3 on each side, you get 6 equals to k. All right, so what does that mean for us? Well, that tells us that term 7 is the term we're looking for, right? Because if k is equal to 6 and your term is k plus 1, term 7 is the term we're looking for. All right, so now we got to find this term. All right. So before we find this term, the seventh term, there is another way to solve and find the term we're looking for. And it's looking for a pattern. Okay, so remember if you, uh, from the first exercise 43, we said that every uh, term that goes, one, this, this, the exponent of this one's going to go down by one, and the exponent of this one's going to go up by one. So the first term, we would simply have x to the power of 2 to the power of, sorry, not 22, to the power of 11, and you'd have x to the negative 1 to the power of 0. Okay, so I, the reason I put x to the power of negative 1 is, it, again, if you have 1 over x, that's the same thing as like x to the negative 1. Notice that I'm not including the, the coefficients. Again, we're just looking for the pattern to find the variable. Okay, so the first term, this would be 22, and this would be 0. So the first term would have x to the power of 22. 
Second term, you would have x to the power of 2 to the power of 10, x to the negative 1 to the power of 1. So you combine that. This is x to the power of 20. This is x to the power of negative 1. So together, you'd have x to the power of 19. Okay, I'm going to do one more just so you can see the pattern. So the next one, you'd have x squared to the power of 9. And here you'd have x to the power of negative 1 to the power of 2. So notice the exponent is going down 1. And here, for the second term, the exponent is going up 1. So this would be x to the power of 18 minus 2. So you'd have x to the power of 16. So notice the pattern is that every single time, you are subtracting 3 to the exponent. So all you'd have to do is keep going up until you get to the point where you got x to the power of 4. So the next term would be 13, 10, 7, and 4. So notice that if this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh term. So this would be term 7. So this would be another way to find the value of k. Alright, so... Now, to find the actual simplified term, it's quite easy because we just have to use the formula and plug it in to get the term we're looking for. So, if I want to find the seventh term, so term 6 plus 1 is equal to nc6, x squared to the power of 11 minus 6, so that's a subtraction. Trying to get that in. And negative 2 over x to the power of 6. So basically, this is all you have to do to actually find that term now. We've determined that k equals 6, k term 7. So k equals 6 is the term we're looking for. And all you got to do now is expand this. So term 7 is equal to 462. Okay, so that's a calculator that gave me that. And then you have, this is 5, 11 minus 6 is 5, so x2 to the power of 5, that would be x10 for the first term. And the second term, you've got to be careful, don't forget the coefficient also is to the power of 6. So you have negative 2 to the power of 6, which is positive 64, right? Anytime you have an even exponent, this negative is going to go away. And on the denominator, you're going to have x to the power of 6. Okay, so now you, to bring everything together, you would just multiply all the coefficients together. So you have four, 462 times 64. So we get 29,568. And if you notice, x10 divided by x6, because x6 is on the denominator, what you end up getting is x4. And that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the term that had x4 in it. And there's your term. All right, next example. Determine the constant in the binomial expansion of this. So the constant is the term without a variable, therefore meaning p to the power of 0. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to attack it the exact same way as I attacked the last question. So we're going to say we know that our term has p to the power of 0 in it. I know that this 3, which is a coefficient, will not affect the, the exponent of p. So the first term will just take p to the power of 18 minus k. And the second term would be 1 over p, which is the same thing as saying p to the negative 1. And that's going to be to the power of k. So all i got to do now is solve for k. And when I solve for k, I'll know which term it is. So you have p to the power of 0 equals to p18 minus k. And then... Here it's multiplication of another minus k, so minus k. So you have p to the 0 equals to p to the 18 minus 2k. So I'm just applying laws of exponents, right? I can add the exponents together when they have the same base. And since now we have the same base on both sides of the equation, I can equate the exponents. Bring the 18 over. And divide by negative 2. Okay. So this is a good place to check here. Um, if you were to find a value that's not a whole number, you know you've got a problem because we're trying to find a certain term, right? So if k is not a whole number, you've got a, there's something wrong somewhere. 
All right, so k is a, is a whole number. We're good with that. Now to find the actual term, we just got to plug in our value of k into our formula. So the term 9 plus 1, so term 10 is the term we're looking for. It's going to be equal to 18c9. So again, this comes from our formula. It's on your formula sheet. So this is nck. n is our exponent, right? First term is 3p. It's 3p to the power of 18 minus 9. And here we have negative 1 over p to the power of 9. Okay, so the 18c9, that gives us um, 48,620. Then you have 3p. I'm going to take a couple of steps to simplify this. To the power of 9. And you have negative 1 over p to the power of 9. Okay, so now, don't forget, and again, this is a common mistake. People will just do p to the power of 9. They will not do 3 to the power of 9. So you have 3 to the power of 9 there. Okay, so your first number is 48,620. And then this is actually 19,683. That's 3 to the power of 9. P to the power of 9. And then over here, we have negative 9 to the power of 9. Uh, sorry, negative 1 to the power of 9, which gives you negative 1. And on the denominator, you're going to have P to the power of 9. Okay. Well, that worked out pretty well, because look, you have p to the power of 9 on the numerator, and you have p to the power of 9 on the denominator. So the p's cancel. Don't forget, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the term without a variable. A constant is a term without a variable. And when we multiply all those numbers together, which is going to be pretty big, as you can tell, you have the term, which is a constant. Let's see if we can fit it in. Notice it's going to be negative, because of this negative 1 over here. You have, I don't even know how to say this number, it's big. 9, 5, 6, 9, 8, 7, 4, 6, 0. Okay, so uh, 956 million, 987,410. Okay, so that's the number, that's a constant that doesn't have a P. All right, next example. Determine the value of the exponent n if the fifth term in the binomial expansion is this. So now I'm giving you the fifth term, which means you know that k is equal to 4, right? And I'm giving you the fifth term is this. So when you're presented with a question like this, we can work exactly the same way as we did in the last question, okay? And we can forget all the coefficients. So let's forget all the coefficients. I know the first term as x squared. I know the second term is x to the power of negative 1. And I know our final term has x squared in it. So let's look at what that looks like. So you have x squared equals to x squared to a certain power n minus k. But this time, I don't know n, but I do know k. And the second term is x to the power of negative 1 to the power of k, which is 4. Notice again, I did not take the coefficient of negative 1. It doesn't matter because we're just looking for the x squared. So note we can simply work with the variable and its exponent, very much like the first two examples. And the 2 here, again, didn't include it because I'm just looking for that x squared. Okay, so this would be x squared equals to x to the power of 2n minus 8. So that's a multiplication of the exponents, right? And here you have times x to the power of negative 4. Okay, laws of exponents lets us add these two together. So you have x to 2 equals x to the power of 2n minus 12. And now laws of exponents lets us equal these because they have the same base. So equal sign between the two exponents. Bring the 12 over. And you have n equals to 7. That's our answer. So the exponent of this, of this binomial is 7. All right, next example. Find the value of m. M is, in this case, a coefficient of one of the terms if the tenth term in the expansion of the binomial is this. So again, tenth term, I know the value of k. That's the hint there, right? And in this case, since I'm looking for a coefficient, so since m is only a coefficient, I'm only going to work with the coefficients, and I'm going to forget the variables are there. So I know the final coefficient is this. I know the coefficient of this term is 2. I know the coefficient of this term is m. So, what does that look like? Well, we're going to say that I know that the final answer is this. 
right? So this is the final term. I know the, the NC, so here we have NCK, right? But K is equal to 9. And notice I also know the value of N, which is 11. So we're going to say this is NC9. The reason I have this NC9 here and before I didn't have it, this time I'm working with coefficients, right? Well, this is part of the coefficient of the term. So I need to include that here. So now the first term is 2 to the power of n minus k. The second term is m to the power of k. All right, so this is what we have. Again, this is an equation for only the coefficients. There are no variables in here in terms of the variables in the exponent. The only variable we have, m, that's actually the coefficient of the second term. Okay, so now we've got some simplification to do. So again, with your calculator, you're going to do NC9. Sorry, in our case, with the 11C9, which is 55. You have 2 to the power of 2, because 11 minus 9 is 2. So you have 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So 55 times 4 times M to the power of 9. Okay, so now I'm going to solve for M. First thing I'm going to do is divide by 55 times 4. So you can write it as 220, or you can just divide by 55 and 4, right? So divide by 55 times 4 on each side. So again, you have a calculator for this, so... Okay. So what you get is 512, and notice that is negative. So negative 512 equals to m to the power of 9. And then now... To solve for m, you need to take the fifth root. Well, it just so happens this is two, negative 2 to the power of 9, but we'll simplify that anyway. So you take the, ne the ninth root on each side, so power of 1 ninth. Okay, so power of 1 ninth over here, so 9. And you get a solution of negative 2. So that means that our coefficient right here is negative 2. Congratulations, guys. Uh, you've actually completed the course by video. So I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see each other in class to study for our final exam.